how far God's brought Reagan just in the past couple of months. It's amazing. I remember our youth group went over there for their house the night that she got back. And they're like, don't hug her, you might break her. So, <laughs> her hands off, but she was happy to see everyone. And uh, Just a lot of love uh, from this church to this family. We just appreciate your prayers and, and your continued prayers for her. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I'm not the Thurstons, but I am thirsty. So. <laughs> You're going to have to put up with me today. The weather uh, prevented them from coming, but they are rescheduled. They will be here again in just a couple of months, so we, uh, we look forward to having them with us. Also, Pastor has been out of town, so, so they're not here today either, but he will be back this week. So uh, just be, be in prayer for them for their safe trip. Amen? Amen. All right, well, let's go to the Word. Are we back up yet? Oh, we're restarting. All right, well, I'll... Uh, Stall with a couple of uh, jokes. How's that? <laughs> Any of you guys, gentlemen, have ever had an argument with your wife just over stupid stuff? But you never intended to win in the first place. You were just arguing <laughs> to hear yourself talk, right? So uh, the husband and wife are arguing about tricks, the cereal. The wife says, No, I'm telling you, I'm right. He couldn't eat the tricks because he was an adult rabbit, and tricks were only supposed to be for kids. So the husband says, well, I always thought it was just because he was a rabbit and not a person. So there's a period of silence. The wife's looking down at her food, and the husband says, what's wrong? The wife says, I'm just really getting tired of you always being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right? We know how that goes, guys, right? Okay, I think I've got one more here. Oh, here we go. So there was a, uh, a customer that went in and uh, ordered his food, and the waiter brought his soup, uh, and then the, the, the customer called the waiter back concerning his soup. The waiter says, yes, sir, is there something wrong? Customer, the soup, taste it. The waiter says, I beg your pardon, sir? Customer says, taste it. The waiter says, but sir, I can assure you that the soup is excellent. Customer says, taste it. The waiter says, sir, the soup was made this morning of the finest ingredients. Customer says, taste it. The waiter exasperated says, all right, sir, I'll taste it. Then after a pause, he said, sir, where's the spoon? To which the customer replied triumphantly, aha! <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, I, uh, I uh, had a little Christmas message for you, uh, and I think it's very appropriate Sorry. for these days because of, of the, uh, the subject matter of it, but we're going to appropriately read the Christmas story from Luke chapter 2. Uh, I won't tell you the version, uh, you'll recognize it uh, after we get into it. So uh, read with me, Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him. While they were there, Joseph built a few tables, worked on a couple of houses, but did nothing really special. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Yes, it was pretty much another routine night in the fields, no angels, no host of heaven, just the buying of the sheep. You guys have this in your Bible? Mm -hmm. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see Joseph tomorrow. I hear he's got a good deal on tables and chairs. So the next day they found Mary and Joseph, and sure enough, they had, built, they had a table built for their home office, and the shepherds returned commenting on what a good deal they got. And Mary pondered in her heart what a great husband she would marry that could make such a good living for the two of them. So that's the, pretty much in a nutshell, the Christmas story uh, without Christ. Right? Get it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's kind of what would have happened if there had been no 
baby Jesus on the first Christmas. Uh, growing up, there was a cartoon that I enjoyed. It was called The Year Without a Santa Claus. Anybody yeah. remember watching that? The little you know, puppets, the, the uh, stop motion. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of fun watching that. Uh, Santa wakes up sick after Thanksgiving. The doctor says, Santa, you really need to take the year off. Santa's like, no, no, I can't take the year off. But then he decides, well, the children don't really care anymore anyway, so maybe I will take the year off. And so Mrs. Claus goes to bed for him, and she goes and talks to the uh, freeze meister and the heat miser and all, all that kind of stuff. And, and it ends up that Santa does end up, you know, doing Christmas anyway. But it was almost a year without a Santa Claus. What? How unimaginable for Christmas to take place without Santa Claus, right? Mm -hmm. It's terrible. But what if that first Christmas was the year without a Savior? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the subject matter is. The year without a Savior. Uh, can you imagine the first Christmas without Christ? Well, it wouldn't have been Christmas. Just another night not to remember, right? No victory, no change, no Savior. But some people want that. It makes absolutely no sense to me why people want to leave Jesus out of Christmas, but they do, right? All the time. They, they don't want a Savior in Christmas. It kind of messes up the whole thing, right? A lot of people see it as no big deal to take Jesus completely out of Christmas. They don't want the baby Jesus in the manger. They want, they want to boycott that. Let's don't have the manger scene, right? They don't want to say Merry Christmas. It's either Merry Xmas or Happy Holidays. Uh, but, you know, leave Christ out of it. They want Santa and Frosty and Rudolph, but not Joseph and Mary. That's so, you know, 2,000 years ago. They want the shopping and the tree and the presents, but not his presents. Oh, that's good. In their home at Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sad. It really is sad, but, but it happens all the time these days. They want the romantic or funny movies and the cartoons extolling the true meaning of Christmas, but that meaning doesn't include Jesus. And we watched a ton of Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel, and me and my daughter Nicole uh, know exactly how they're going to end. <laughs> you know, the, the people that we, we, we say these are the two that are going to fall in love and you know the loser boyfriend that the girl has is eventually going to be dumped and you know, they'll end up falling in love at the end and she'll say all I want for Christmas is you and then they'll kiss at the end and, and that's the true meaning of Christmas, right? But that's, that's kind of how it is. <coughs> but I don't think that people really understand what they're doing when they leave Jesus out of Christmas. Some people don't necessarily intend to leave out Jesus, but they get so busy with the holiday bustle that they find themselves at the end of the holiday almost fully, if not fully, leaving Christ out of the whole thing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk about today just uh, uh, several things, several implications of leaving Jesus out of Christmas. The Christmas without a Savior. Well, it should be obvious in the first place that there would be no Christmas without Christ. I mean, you know, Christmas, that's kind of what it's all about. There, it wouldn't be there. But let's take a look at other implications of Christmas or even life's existence without Jesus Christ. I mean, let's face it, without Jesus, there would be no St. Nicholas, whom we have made the modern-day Santa Claus. So uh, there, it would be a year without a Santa Claus if it was a year without Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no Christmas carols like the ones that we sang this morning. The first Noel, Silent Night, Joy to the World, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, Noel. It's all about Jesus. Yep. They wouldn't be around. There would be no December holidays except perhaps winter solstice because uh, you wouldn't have Kwanzaa, you wouldn't have Hanukkah, you wouldn't have Christmas, nothing to celebrate except the... Uh, falling of the snow, which some people don't celebrate. Like, <laughs> uh, there wouldn't be such a thing as a holiday season because the very word holiday comes from the word holy day, which means a time of celebration and reflection in honor of God. So there would be no holiday season. The most wonderful time of the year wouldn't be the most wonderful time of the year. 
Without Jesus, there would be no good news of a great joy that's for all men. Right? Mm -hmm. There would be absolutely no peace on earth. I mean, you think we got a rough world now? That's think about right. a world without Jesus. That's right. Oh. Amen. Amen. Be awful. Without Jesus, there would be no John 3.16. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't exist without Christ. Without Jesus, the fact is that we would still be hopelessly lost in our sins. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's something to think about. Right? Mm -hmm. Sin and death and the devil would still reign over all men. See, when Jesus came and before he uh, ascended back to the Father, he said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Well, if Jesus hadn't been here, the devil would still have all that authority mm -hmm. of sin and death and the sting of death that Jesus Christ took away. It would still be there. We would still be required to sacrifice sheep and goats and doves and other choice animals to cover our sins. How'd you like to do that once a year? No, thank you. you. Take your favorite little sheep uh, up to the altar, you know, and take out your knife and slit his throat, let the blood drain out, shake it all over the altar. You know, that's what they had to do before Jesus became that sacrifice for our sins. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would still be living under the law, having to observe the very letter of every bit of the law, still observing the feasts, all the regulations written in the Pentateuch would still be upon us to live and to do right and to make it through life. Without Jesus, you would still be making a yearly trek to Jerusalem, if you happen to be lucky enough to be born a Jew or the servant of a Jew, otherwise you're just a miserable Gentile and you're out there to fend for yourself. Without Jesus, there would be no healer of sicknesses and diseases. You would be stuck with your sickness. There would be no stripes by which you were healed because there would have been no one to bear them. You would be just stuck living with it. How sad. The leper would still be the leper. The blind man would still be a blind man. The woman with the issue of blood would have shortly died of her disease because there was no one whose hem of his garment she could touch and receive her healing. Lazarus would still be in the grave because there was nobody to call him forth from the grave. Without Jesus, there would be no fulfillment of prophecy about the virgin with child. No Emmanuel, which means God with us. The child would be born. The child who would be born on whose shoulders the government would rest would not be there. No wonderful counselor. No mighty God. No everlasting father. No prince of peace. In fact, we wouldn't even know our God as father because Jesus is the one that introduced us to our father in heaven. Amen? Amen? I mean, we, we just don't think about that sometimes. Like there's so much that Jesus brought to this earth that we just don't understand what would be missing if he weren't here. Without Jesus, there would be no peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Without Jesus, there would be no fullness of joy. Without Jesus, all your needs would not be supplied according to God's glorious riches through Christ Jesus. Without Jesus, you would have no high priest who understands all your weaknesses and who was tempted in every area, yet without sin. You would just have some unknown God up there that we, that we don't know how to get in touch with and who is a judge and a convictor of sin. That's all we would know about. Without Jesus, you would have no one at the right hand of the Father forever making intercession for you. Someone pulling for you. Someone saying, Jim is worth it, Father. I'm pulling for him. He's going to stand before you with my blood. And he's going to stand before you righteous. There would be no him who knew no sin became sin for us 
so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. There would be none of that. Without Jesus, there would be no one to fix our eyes upon as we run this race. No author, no finisher of our faith. You would have no one at the right hand of the Father making intercession. I already said that. There would be no word made flesh. There would be no exact representation of the Father that we could see. And he would still remain a mystery to us. Think about this. Without Jesus, there would be no way to the Father. Because Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except by me. Mm -hmm. Right? Without Jesus, there would be no Holy Spirit sent to be with us and to be in us who would teach us all things. And I can't imagine a life without <coughs> the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine. That's okay. But when we leave Jesus out of things, that's what we're asking for. Without Jesus, we would have no glorious hope of His returning because He never came in the first place. He would have not gone away to prepare a place for you so that, so that where He is, you could be also. You would just be stuck waiting to die, hoping that you were good enough to stand before a holy God. Wow. Without Jesus, there would be no resurrection of the dead, no trumpet sound, no catching away of the church to look forward to. Right? And I'm looking for that day. Amen. Without Jesus, there would be no church. Hmm. Only Jewish synagogues, probably still run by Pharisees and Sadducees. Think about that. <laughs> Without Jesus, there would be no United States of America. That's right. A nation founded as one nation under God. There would be no freedom, religious or otherwise. What a terrible thing to have a year without a Savior. But that's what so many of us want. Not us, but, you know, so many people want. But they don't understand what they're saying. Right. Just like when they hung Jesus Christ on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what mm -hmm. they do. When we want to have Christmas and celebrate all the, the fluff and all the stuff and the tree and the characters, mm -hmm. but we leave Jesus Christ out, we don't understand what we're doing. That's right. Because Christmas means so much more mm -hmm. than what so many people make it. Yes. A Savior. A healer. A deliverer. One whom we can have a relationship with, who has revealed to us the Father, who has revealed to us the kingdom that we can be a part of. That's what Christmas is all about. Amen? Yes. Paul alluded to this. He was talking about Christ's resurrection from the dead, but he, he said something along these same lines. In 1 Corinthians 15, 13, he said, For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then we are all, then all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God, for we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there's no resurrection of the dead. And if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless, and you are still guilty of your sins. Hmm. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. Oh. And if that were the end of the story, and I'd be depressed. I'd be like, man, right. it ain't worth it. But then comes verse 20. It says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who die. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Yes. Here's the thing, guys. It's a fact that Jesus was born and came into this world over 2,000 years ago for you and for me. On that first Christmas day, Jesus did show up. There was a baby in the manger. And he did accomplish and finish 
all that he came to do. Now, since you are so confused at the first Christmas story I read to you, I want to read the real one to you. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph all went up, also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah the, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he, he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married with him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about them to this, about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Don't you like that version a lot better? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. And that version is the true version of the first Christmas. Jesus Christ came as a baby, the Word made flesh, who made His dwelling among us, so that He could be the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, despising His shame, sat down at the right hand of the Father to ever make intercession for you and me, took the stripes upon His own body so that we could be healed, shed His own blood so that we could be cleansed and made righteous in God's sight. Man, I don't ever mm. want to have a Christmas mm. without a Savior. Mm. Amen. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad that Christ came on Christmas? Let's keep it that way because Christmas begins with Christ and Christmas ends with Christ. Yep. Aren't you glad that Christ is in you? Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? And if He's not... And let's take care of that this morning because he wants to be. He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And he wants to be forever with you. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning.